Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with GTA Online. If you enjoy this video, please cause as much environmental damage as possible to make the oceans get warmer and the sea levels rise, which will increase the chance of tropical storms that will then turn into hurricanes. Then write a letter to the World Meteorologist Organization and ask them to name one of these hurricanes Modest Pelican Gaming, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. Holy shit, that was elaborate. Let's go. Meet Agent 47, a retired hitman who is on a mission to become the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos, whilst also ensuring he stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. These are Du Bois, Stealth Omato, and Crosby, and together the trio form a feared gang known as the Sons of Virgins. These are their stories. Bruh. So I spawn into my penthouse as per usual with my red tie, speed dealer sunglasses, and of course, a can-do attitude. Now I've been reflecting a lot about my life and I feel like I'm missing something. Like should I be spending more time with my family? Should I adopt a cute little pet that I can form a bond with? Should I be volunteering or something? But then it hits me. I need to become a seedy nightclub owner. Nothing warms the soul like taking obscene amounts of ecstasy, social smoking, and then catching chlamydia during a dodgy nightclub toilet hookup, so I invest just over $1 million in my new classy establishment. Some might say that was a complete waste of $1 million, and do you know what we call those people? Financially competent. So obviously I'm pretty excited to check out my new club, and Stealth Omato says he'll come and pick me up. I really should have seen this coming though, as he then proceeds to not pick me up at all. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, and you're a dodgy little malacca who faps to women's underwear catalogues, and so when Mato tries to squish me again, I blow him up with a sticky bomb. Unfortunately, as that was his personal vehicle, I have to pay $18,000 in insurance fees, but honestly, it's money well spent, as it inconvenienced him, which is always funny. So we pick up Crosby and make our way over to the club. When we arrive, this random guy is just making it rain dollar bills, and as a fellow waster of money, I respect him enormously. It's always cool when players just act chill in GTA Online, as it's honestly pretty rare, and then Mato guns him down in cold blood. Have you guys noticed how aggressive Mato has become these last few months? Like I reckon half the angry Reddit posts about toxicity in online gaming are because of solely him. I walk in and the club sucks, it looks like a BDSM dungeon. I then meet Tony from GTA 4. I can't say the word that normally goes before his name as that's a big no-no on YouTube, so I'll just say not straight Tony, who ironically sleeps with a lot of women. I also meet Laszlo and he's just the worst. I've honestly never wanted to punch someone in the face so much. So yeah, this is my club, it's terrible. I mean, you spend $1 million, you sort of expect some colorful lights and shit, but apparently it's under renovation. I try to get the party going anyway, but the vibe just isn't there, as we are literally just dancing in some sketchy abandoned concrete building. The only positive is there's probably someone selling heroin close by. But then I head upstairs, and my office area has already been renovated, and this is pretty baller. I've got a desk right next to Not Straight Tony's, and he has a lot of nice stationery and a desk plant. And as I'm a real evil Knievel, I plan to steal his stapler later. Anyway, to get the club pumping, we need to to get some staff members, some sound equipment, and a DJ. If you're wondering why I'm drinking cola and not beers, it's because I take pride in my work, unlike Marto, the filthy alcoholic. So first things first, let's get ourselves some staff members. I wonder what wacky, crazy scenario Rockstar have planned for us. Will we be shooting rival gangsters, or perhaps racing cars through the city as we are chased down by a helicopter? Well, no, none of that. Quite literally, we are just driving around Los Santos picking up staff members. Like that's it. This is basically Uber Driver Simulator 2019. Hey guys, how's your night been? Haha, <laughs> please leave a 5 star review or I'll track you down and stab you 32 times. Haha, <laughs> would you like a Mentos or a bottle of water? If nothing else, it's immersive, like I'm sure if I started a nightclub in real life, there'd be a lot of boring driving around, I guess. So yeah, you'd think this mission would be super simple, but nope. Marto decides to start crushing some of the staff member's friends with his SUV. The guy I need to pick up then gets scared, and we fail the mission. 
Fun fact, Mato is literally the third highest leading cause of the world's deaths behind only heart disease and cancer. You've got to respect him though, as he then performs an honor suicide to make amends and as someone who isn't Japanese, that's actually incredibly progressive. We do the mission again, and this time we absolutely crush it. In fact, no, we shouldn't be proud of that. I think we must be the only people who didn't finish that on the first attempt. But anyway, our club has staff now and people are already lining up. The only staff member we didn't get was a weirdly skinny but confident dude in a black v-neck t-shirt who stands out the front handing out free drink cards and hitting on underage girls. Now though it's time to get a sound system so that we can play some beats. We got a tip off that there's a desert party going on and apparently a party bus that we can steal there. This is some real burning man shit. Gotta love hippies though. They refuse to conform to a conventional lifestyle and get a job but instead use their unemployment benefits to buy acid. Unemployment benefits come from the everyday taxpayer and therefore the everyday taxpayer is ironically paying for their acid. So I guess on behalf of Stealth Omato, he'd like to say thank you very much everyone for the acid. I'm just kidding, he's not a hippie, but it is fun being the friend with a YouTube channel because I can just say whatever I like, but no, Mato's an outstanding citizen and he pays his taxes and buys his own acid. We steal the party bus and even manage to run over a few party goers on our way out, which is really neat. Another pretty cruisy mission and we manage to deliver the bus without any problems. Well I mean we deliver like 60% of the bus because Mato is a really awful driver. I was actually driving but do you see how easily I can manipulate these situations to make myself look good? It's great. So the bus is delivered and the renovations for the nightclub seem to be going well. Oh yeah, I got to pick the name of this place from a few options and I chose Tony's Funhouse. Sounds more like a human organ farm than a place to enjoy a cocktail, but that's exactly why I picked it. Also, Laszlo is still hanging around here and I swear to God, if I could, I would beat him to death so viciously that the only way they'd be able to identify his corpse would be through his dental records. Like we're trying to open a nightclub here, Chief, not cosplay Darth Maul. Honestly, you're like ADHD on legs. This whole nightclub club is turning out to be a questionable purchase. I wanted to be making bad life decisions, not bloody meditating. Anyway, the last thing to do is to pick up a DJ called Solomon from the airport. Crosby's game kept disconnecting so he bailed and it's just down to Marto and myself. What could possibly go wrong? We arrive at the airport, but the pilot flying Solomon's private jet has apparently taken too many zannies and passed out. I mean, I get it, flying is stressful and he probably just wanted to take the edge off, but still, this is a real predicament. DJ Solomon decides he'll save the day and gets into the cockpit and just starts pressing buttons, which seems like the wrong thing to do. I'm not sure what the right thing to do would be in this nightmare situation, however, so GG. We follow the rapidly falling jet out to the desert as DJ Solomon is going to try and land on a runway out there. It would be super inconvenient if he died in a plane crash, as I just want to party, you know? Actually, I guess I could just plug my iPhone into the sound system and get the exact same experience. I'm just kidding, I know DJs are talented. Like sometimes the aux cable gets tangled or you have to skip an advertisement on Spotify, it's a pretty rough profession. So yeah, as you can see, Solomon managed to land the plane. Yay, hooray, well done big source, let's go get f***ed up. I drive the crew back to the club and we get ready to party. That sounds so lame. For the ultimate cringe, I would have started playing the Like a G6 song, but I'd get slammed for copyright, so I'll just sing it for you real quick. Like a G6, like a G6, yeah, now I'm feeling so fly like a G6. Melting water down from ice, like we Satan. When we drink, it's all about that hydration. I love water more than three ships. Now I marry this girl because she sips. Wow, Lil Pelly coming at you with a freestyle. Just kidding, I spent like a good pathetic 10 minutes on those lyrics, but yeah, as you can see, my club is popping off. Stealth Omato and I hit the dance floor and you've got to love how Thick Man dances. He is just such a happy camper. Mato, on the other hand, is being entirely inappropriate and probably should take a course on respecting people's personal space bubbles, but hot damn, the man can thrust. Well, no idea why I spent so much money on this nightclub, but what's done is done and so we head upstairs. Apparently it does make me some cash and at least I can manage my other businesses from here. All two of them. Mato then aggressively thrusts towards the desk plant, which is just a new level of disrespect. 
I log on to the computer and do business things. You know, a bit of Microsoft Excel here, a bit of Myob and some road mapping, collaboration, revolution, synergy, just normal business stuff. All the while, Marto lazily naps on the couch, but you've got to say, that jacket is pimping. If nothing else, the nightclub has made me feel like a successful businessman. And what do successful businessmen do? Well, they cheat on their wives and they neglect their kids, but more importantly, they go outside in that warm sunshine and play golf. We arrive at the clubhouse and get ready to play. And also, yes, this video just turned into a mother golf video. Please like and subscribe. Marto is up first and shows that he's not just here to look pretty and fires one down range. The thick man shows that as well as killing people for money, he can also smack a golf ball pretty well and like I'm really trying to commentate golf gameplay right now. I don't even know why we played golf for so long. We stayed here for ages. Here, let me try reporting like I was a professional golf commentator. Stealtho Mato steps up wearing a pimp jacket and a fedora. The back of his hands look bruised so you can tell he's been working hard. Can he hit this 55 kilometer putt? And my oh my, the young Australian has executed that shot with exceptional skill. Agent 47 steps up and this should be an easy putt for the mass murdering assassin, but he's pulled out his six iron and has chosen to hit the ball all the way back in the opposite direction. A bold move if I do say so. So yeah, we end up drawing the game somehow and decide to settle our differences with a fight to the death on top of my office building. We drive over there and then Marto mounts my car as a sign of dominance to suck me out before the fight. Strategic thinking. We head upstairs all, boys, 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 except it's just, boys, boys, because Rockstar servers hate Crosby. While I'm resupplying my snacks, Marto then thrusts at my secretary and frankly, this man just crossed a line. Nobody inappropriately hits on my office secretary but me. We walk up to the rooftop. This is the biggest fight of the last 1000 years. Muhammad Ali versus Joe Fraser, Please, this is an actual fight. This truly is Clash of the Titans. Unfortunately though, Marto's jacket, as fresh as it is, is not entirely practical for a fist fight and I managed to sneak the win, but my boy fought valiantly. We go round two and the fight is pretty even, but then Marto does something no one could have predicted. He pulls an ax out of I guess his pocket and starts slashing me with it. Some would call this cheap, but I call it innovation. It's this out of the box thinking that separates us sons of virgins from the sons of non-virgins. When society says stop at a red traffic light, we keep driving. When society says not to shout at old people, we shout louder. When society says that you can't walk around in public places with an erection, we run around in public places with an erection. We are like the modern day Leonardo da Vinci's up in this bitch. Okay, wow, who do I think I am, a motivational speaker? Thanks for watching you bloody legends and a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel through Patreon. Have yourselves a great week, until next time and as always, stay classy.